Hello everybody and welcome to our talk about uh, Spring Cloud Gateway with a style. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, where are we? Um, we are uh, both seniors of one engineers at VMware. We are uh, developing a Spring Cloud products with Kate mainly, both in commercial and in open source uh, versions. And uh, well, we have been working together for two years. Yeah. And uh, we met in person yesterday for the first time. Um, I'm still in shock because he's so tall. And Thum doesn't tell you about that. So be careful with Thum. Um, I'm, I'm really in shock about this. Um, I'm from Asturias, the north of Spain. And I have been working for a lot of years in different open source uh, projects. Hello, uh, I'm Abel Salgado. Um, since she mentioned the meeting us yesterday and, and everything else on my side, I have also the biggest feed <laughs> from all the speakers, so I had to order a special uh, size shoes. Um, another fun fact. Um, I'm a member of the Barcelona JAC, so obviously I'm based here in Barcelona. I'm an ASCII doctor contributor, mainly on the Java side of the project, so if someone has any question about that, I'd be more than happy to talk about that. For those that don't know, it's just based something that is better than Markdown in every possible way. And I don't know why people <laughs> still use Markdown. It's not a joke. It's actually better in any possible way. I'm quite pedantic Linux user. Um, I use Mac for work, but I don't allow anything that is not Linux in my personal machines. Um, also, if anyone has any issue about Linux gaming, I'm there too. Um, let's talk a little bit of how we are here. I, why we're here, sorry. Um, basically, uh, when we were presenting the talk, uh, we wanted to show especially like some tricks, something that we have been learning in the past year, working with the Spring Cloud Gateway, and something that we want to share, especially so people is not afraid. There is a learning curve, and we want to show that, OK, it's not that hard, and it's, in fact, quite easy once you learn a few tricks. Uh, that's related to the next topic, how to exploit and take the gateway to the next level, we find that, depending to who you talk, Gateway is like a big unknown project inside the Spring ecosystem. And it's a shame, because you can do really nice things with it. And especially, of course, have fun. Uh, we will be, you will be dealing with us for the next hour. And we hope to make it as nice as possible. And also, what it is not, it is not a one-to-one -one on Spring Cloud Gateway. So um, we light a little bit. On the, on, the, on the abstract, uh, we are going to assume some level of expertise, or at least we are going to go through some concepts very quickly, and we're going to focus on the key parts. So don't worry if, like, OK, I don't understand this. Uh, we are available for questions after the session or at the end. Uh, so just to get an idea of the audience, who knows the Spring Cloud Gateway? OK, that's a good thing. And you are here, so you like it. Uh, who has had some experience like customizing it, doing filters or predicates, things like that? OK, not so many people. So the rest will enjoy this session, and this is especially for you. Okay. So how does it work? At the end, well, uh, the Spring Cloud Gateway is based on, on a reactive stack, and it sits between, it's a component that sits between your client application and the upstream service. Uh, routing your requests and receiving your responses, we are just like in the middle. It allows you to to do a lot of things thanks to that because you have the po the power of uh, hijacking a lot of things. Okay, so um, one of the of the best things, <laughs> also the dangerous things about the Spring cl uh, Cloud Gateway is, is exactly this, that you have the power to do a lot of things, so you have to, to be careful. Um, oops, sorry. Um, we are going to focus in this talk in, on filters, um, especially filters per route. And, uh, filters act, like I said, in, in both sides, on the request and on the response, uh, through a chain, so we have a chain and a flow of all the filters that you like to, to apply. So the order is important. You must take into account that. And um, you, you really need to, to know how, what you want to do 
and how to do it because it can be, like I said, it can be a bit dangerous to hijack some, some of the things. So, well, let's, let's see some code and, and let's start because I think it's better to explain it through code than through words. Uh, what we need to begin? Well, a Spring Initializer is always there <laughs> to help us and not think a lot about uh, architecture. So, um, what we need? Well, of course, a Spring Cloud Gateway because it's, it's well, the base that, that we need. And we also recommend uh, to, to add, uh, as a dependency, the actuator because it's a simple project, but it allows you a, uh, and it gives you a lot of uh, and a powerful tools like uh, metrics, health of your application. So we we also recommend to to have it in in the same uh, way as the as the gateway. And in, for these demos, we are uh, using a Spring Security. Abel is going to to show some cool features related to security. So that's why we are uh, adding it here. So we are ready. We can download the, the project from the Spring Initializer, and we are ready to develop our first filter. So uh, actually, this is it. Just being with one simple class, you can develop uh, your own and customize your filter. Um, Spring Cloud Gateway provides a hook. This class that we are seeing here, this abstract class, if you stem from it, you are ready to go. You can uh, create your your own uh, filter, and like I said before, uh, it gives us the possibility of mutate the request from the client to an upstream service, and also to modify or to process that response. So there are like two parts, these two blocks that I'm showing here. Um, in this specific filter, I'm adding uh, headers. Uh, in the first block, I'm adding a header to the, to the request that will reach the upstream service. And uh, after it reaches the, the upstream service and the service returns the response, I'm also adding uh, through the gateway another header. So quite easy. Let's see in, in action. Oh, spoiler. Well, first of all, for, for those folks that are not super familiar with the gateway, we are um, configuring everything through YAML files. It's quite easy. In this, in this case, as you can see here, I'm just, uh, we have uh, this service, this up stream application, that um, uh, in this case, the path headers is returning, is like an echo, is returning all the headers that I'm sending. And um, I'm configuring this new filter that I have developed, that it, well, is exactly the same that I just showed on the presentation. As we can see here, I'm adding to the request uh, a new header, and also after all the change goes to the upstream uh, service and returns a response, I'm also adding uh, another header to the response. We can see it in action. This, uh, like you, you can see, uh, well, in this port I have the, the gateway, and I'm calling the, the path that I have configured, okay, to call the upstream service. I'm performing just up a get a get uh, request to the to the headers uh, path, and well, as you can see, the echo is returning the header that I'm I'm jack in the request, and also we have in the response the other header. Okay, so well, I think it's uh, quite easy, right? No, no questions so far, uh, because we are going to ramp this a little bit. Um, let's raise the stake. Let's say, um, because this was like just to get in touch, like what we can do. OK, we have a gateway in, the mi in between. We can add things to the communication. So transparently, uh, we can modify the traffic. But let's say we can do more things. Uh, just out of curiosity, who attended this morning session from Robert Winch about Auth? OK. So that was an excellent talk <laughs> about OAuth. And here, I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to make the quick summary. But if you want to really deep down, look later when the video is published. It was really good. So let's say we have our 
upstream service, and we want to add security. In this case, for the reasons that Robert explained, we want to add OAuth because tokens are more secure, more performant. And then <coughs> we not only want to do that, we want to extract some information from the token. The OAuth uh, token provides some information in the form of it's called claims, basically key values. We will see that. And not only that, we want to add this security, we want to access the token, and we want to make it on a service that doesn't talk OAuth and doesn't care about OAuth. We don't, that the upstream service is not going to be modified in any way. And that's precisely one of the good scenarios in which you want to add a gateway into your architecture, because that way you can add these cross-cutting concerns topics that you can extrapolate to all your backend services like security, and you don't need to touch anything. Or even if you have a, a monolith and you want to start splitting services, you can use the gateway to redirect some resources to that. To do that, <coughs> I'm going to explain a little bit the, the scenario that we're going to build. We have, again, our client application, the gateway, and our upstream service. And we have a new friend up there, Okta. Okta is a cloud uh, identity provider. So it basically does for you the same thing that Rob explained this morning that you can do with a Spring uh, authentication server but it's cloud and it's easy to set up and they already have a demo with integrating Okta with uh, a Spring Boot, so I could use that easily and save some time or some time <laughs> for planning the demo. And what will be the workflow or what should be the workflow in a normal interaction in this system? First, the client application would use Okta to obtain the token. Again, I, I want to reiterate that I'm simplifying the scenario. You could do that from the gateway, but for this sake, let's make it simple. That way, the application authenticates. It could be an, an, uh, an application token or a user token. We will use a user token in the demo. Then we are going to send a request to the gateway with the given token. So the gateway is going to validate and authenticate that, authorize that. That's the step. For those concerned about performance, this is just to understand the flow. The gateway is validating the token, but the way you have works is not actually doing a call to Okta every time. Obviously, that would introduce a lot of delay. It's just validating the signature, and the gateway has already obtained the keys to do that. But you can kind of assume that, yeah, you are validating the token against Okta on any request. And finally, we're going to send the data to the upstream. Remember, we wanted to extrain some information from the token. That way, the upstream service if we can provide only the information that that service needs in a way that that service understands, we don't need to modify that service to do the all OAuth integration. So in short, and if you see, we have like two parts. So for this ex example, we are not going to have one filter. We're going to have two. So it's kind of <laughs> scaling the problem. Because that's another thing of the nice thing. The gateway and the abstraction of the filters allow you to isolate features. So you can then mix and match those the way you want. The first filter will be the one responsible for validating the token. And if you see, again, um, I saw the, the talk from Robert, and I was like, oh, um, great. He made half of my work. <laughs> because this is just the same thing that he did this morning. We are having a, a filter. So we have all these shenanigans for the gateway filter. But we are configuring a Spring security chain inside the the filter. And I really wanted to show this because uh, we work with customers and we see that they start doing this whole manual token validation inside the filters. And then we tell them, like, hey, you can just inter integrate the Spring Security. And then they integrate the Spring Security the normal Spring Boot way with a general, uh, a global Spring Security chain set up as a bean. And it, but that affects all the routes. And it's no, no, you can just set it in a filter like any other filter. So this is. Uh, Spring security package component. This is all the DSL to enable uh, OAuth uh, validation. That means that we define that we will act as a resource server and we will add this uh, job decoder that basically this is, you can copy paste this as a receipt. And then once we have specified how we are going to, to validate the token, we want to say, okay, now that I have a token, what do I do with that? We are going to say, okay, we want that calls through this filter are authenticated. So if the token is expired, if the token is anonymous, if the token, for any reason, is not a valid authenticated token, it will go away. You can even go further and say, OK, I want the token to, to have a specific uh, claims uh, or scopes, if you're familiar with IDC also, because this is the demo Okta provides IDC compatibility. And finally, so we have said, let's validate tokens. Let's ensure that the token is correct. 
we need to do the kind of whiting. This part here, this is the spring security. This is the actual filter in reality. Don't be uh, like misled. This is a lambda, but it's just the implementation of, a, of the gateway filter interface. And this here, we are again using another spring security component, the web filter chain proxy, to inject our chain and then just triggering the gateway filter chain. And that's it. It's, I admit, the first time I saw it, I was like, wait, that's like inception to the square. <laughs> we have, the gateway has a filter chain of filters, and then we also have a security filter chain, and we are having one inside the other. Um, so it's, it's normal to the first time feel a little bit misled. Yes, take this as a receipt. The, the good thing is that then, once you understand this, you can do any kind of uh, security configuration for a specific filter. And the second part is the part that uh, we saw in the previous diagram, like the point four. It's, okay, I have a token. I want to retrieve the token. Once it's valid, I want to uh, extract a claim from it and then send it in this case, so our upstream service doesn't talk OAuth, we want to send it as normal HTTP headers. In this case, we want to do two things. We want to provide a header uh, that we will be extracting the user name from the claim and sending that to the upstream service, so the service can do whatever it needs to do with, this, with the information. And another thing is that we want to add another header that tells, okay, the type of authentication, and we will see later in the demo why. The first part, and again, this is just integrating a Spring Security. This is the same thing that you would do in a Spring application using a Spring Security. So this is, if you want to make an analogy, this is, would be like having um, a REST controller with two methods. And then in one method, you validate the token, and then the other, you obtain the information from the token. But in this way, if you integrate it in the gateway, you can just uh, mix and match them using the YAML configuration. And once we have the session that is injected by the previous filter, we can just extract the claim, which is all the, all the parsing is done in this add claim method. We mutate the exchange. That's another typical um, pitfall that we see people doing request, get header, set something, and then they say, yeah, I'm not seeing the changes. Well, you need to mutate the, the request. It's not enough to just modify it because the way reactive, the reactive workflow works, it means that you are not, that's not the actual request you are sending at the end. And just, just send it. And this, this is the protection. In case this reactive, because this is, this is like an optional, in case this is empty, so we will just do this mark as an authenticated, which will also send a header to the app saying, hey, this is not a valid uh, session. So. If I can get this to work, okay. Let's see the first one in detail. Uh, is the authorized? This is the one that we saw. So as, as I was mentioning, the only thing that was not shown in the slide is this basically uh, a little wrap method to simplify the configuration. Again, if you were this morning in the wrap session, he explained yet why and when you should use disable. This is because we are just working on an API integration. Uh, if you were planning for this endpoint to be called from a front end, you will probably like to enable this protection. But in this case, we are just disabling. And then the other, the actual interesting filter, the extract claim. Okay, here we go back. This is what we saw in the slide. This is the method. And here you can see this is mostly widening. We are obtaining an authentication. Again, I want to reemphasize, we are just using normal Spring security. So if you are familiarized with that, this is something you can easily do. So we check that this is an actual JOT authentication. This is for internal reasons. Um, I'm not going to extend. I'm happy to explain later if someone has doubts. And this is how we ex obtain the, the token and the information. We have this authentication. We have to do this nicely cast. This gives us the claims, which I repeat, this is just uh, key values information, and we get specifically one that is we are configuring in the config object. So this is where how we are saying, okay, give me, there is a claim that is specifically called name, and just give it to me. And once I have the claim, I will just add it as a new header. And again, remember to always do this exchange mutate to ensure that what you are modifying will be actually modified and sent. 
to the upstream service. Um, to complete this, let's see the configuration. And I need to scroll it so I don't spoil the final part of the demo. OK. Uh, <laughs> we are seeing this is the new route that I will define. I will call a slash authorized. And then just focus on this part. This is the first filter that we saw. This is the one that is validating that everything is correct and working. And then this is the struct claim, in which I say, OK, give me the claim that is called name. Put it in a header that it's called x claim name. I know naming is hard. And it will be sent again. Let's go here because I don't trust demos. So I basically script everything. Uh, this is just like the most amazing bash script ever. Just doing some HTTP calls. Uh, we do this call, right? Authorize, get. We did not mention that, but it's as an upstream service, we are using just HTTP bin instance running in Docker. If no one is familiar, it's just a service. It's, it, there is a cloud uh, available, but we run locally because demos. We don't want to depend on network. And it's just calling. Uh, it's an echo service. So whatever you send it to that endpoint, it will respond with a JSON with, OK, this is the information I got. So that's how we can know which headers we are adding, because basically we are getting that as a response from the upstream. And hey, this failed. 401 and authorize. And why? We have this message, this, oh, the chat token expired. Basically because, yes, I did a test like this morning, and the token has expired. So let's, let's refresh the token. To refresh the token, I have another the Okta application that I mentioned. This is from an Okta report. I must say thanks to Matt Rabel uh, for doing that, the developer of package from Okta. If you don't know Okta, you need to do all the stuff. It's, it's interesting. You can create a developer account and set up things uh, to do your testing. OK, let me log in into it. I have my information already filled. So you don't have to see my txt plain file in my desktop with my passwords. OK, this is the step. This is simulating that the thing we saw from the client application. I'm logging into Okta, and I'm obtaining a token. To obtain the token, I just go here. And this is all the information from the token. All these, you see claims. These are all the different claims. So we saw there is one called name, and this is me, and this is the token. Uh, I have scripted the process, so the token is already stored in a local file, and I can just call them again, and it will use the new token, and now it's working. We are doing the call to the authorized endpoint. We are getting the successful response, and if we check what HTTP bin, the echo service is responding, it's saying, OK, I got a header called X claim name with this information, and I got this X authorization header that it's telling, OK, this came from a JOT token. So in your architecture, your services, even if they don't talk out, they can say, OK, I got this information. And how I know this information is reliable? Because someone told me this came from a JOT token. And in theory, the JOT token is validated. There is a, a level of trust. And of course, it will depend on your company policies, how you trust your network. Uh, but this is a typical scenario in which, OK, I have these backend applications that, of course, no one has touched in years, but we need to do some modernization and add new, new security. And if I do a second call, OK, that's that's the interesting part. And the complicated part that I, I struggle to explain. Uh, here, we are doing a call to another endpoint, not authorized, OK? And here, we are getting an OK. OK, so in theory, it's fine. But we are getting this X authorization, which remember, this is one of the headers we are adding in our filter, saying anonymous, and we don't get a name. And why is that? In this call, we are not calling this route that we have here. We are calling this one that we have here. What's the difference between one and the other that we here we are not adding this authorized filter? So that's the part that I was saying before, before mix and match. That way, because we have encapsulated our field features in different filters, we can easily just add a line. And OK, this now will work fine, and we will get our information. And this is something even that, if you introduce typos, uh, it's, you can configure it online. The actuator endpoint has a, um, if you enable actuator with a Spring Cloud project, has an extra endpoint called routes that you can use just to using a Rust API to update the routes. So you don't even 
need to do that on a modify YAML or deploy application. You can just call the endpoint and modify your application in productions, which is something we never do, right? <laughs> <laughs> we never debug in production even. Um, of course, this is a, just a simple example, and you don't want to have something like, oh, OK, I need a token, and in case the token is not present, I'm just going to report a, a 200 anyway. But for the sake of the example, you can see that uh, how you can modularize. Ideally, if you need, obviously, to add the validation of the token, you will just add the filter. But see that this is a, an interesting example of how to do this, to get this kind of flexibility in a normal Spring Boot application, you will need to do some configuration of the routes in your REST controllers and things like that. Here, it's just a configuration because the gateway provides you with all the abstractions. OK. No. Well, you Sorry. missed the, the best GIF of. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh -huh. we made the simple filter. <laughs> we made like the complex filter with the Spring security. Um, and now I think you are ready because from now on it's just down a slope and it's, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> and Marta will continue. So, well, let's talk about configuration because in these previous uh, filters, mm, we are not using a, a lot of uh, examples with configuration. I will, we're just like adding a couple of attributes with the name and the claim. But one of the powerful things about uh, Spring Cloud UA and the filters is that you can configure in dynamically um, arguments or properties that mm, you, you really want to, to have there. So, well, this is like the common configuration that we can find in, in the Spring Cloud UA documentation. Like, mm, very simple if we, <laughs> if we think about it, like just, I don't know, uh, adding, the, um, adding a, an, a property. Uh, for this filter that uh, allows you to to cut based on a size of the request, and well, taking the previous example, the first one that we that we saw, we can uh, if we can if we have sorry if we have a filter that adds uh, some headers to the request, for example, uh, in the previous example I was just putting it into the code, but we can parameterize that, and we can uh, add some some configuration. So, for example, uh, in in this in this case, I'm uh, using uh, well the, the the same as uh, Abel were doing. Like I'm going to put a name for the for the um, uh, uh, header attribute and the value. Okay. So, what if I want to add multiple uh, request header? I don't know, twice or three. I don't know. Uh, if we, d if we want to, to ask multiple, I will have to ask for the path. Uh, you know, the filters once, one after other. So in terms of, perf of performance, that seems a bit off, you know? Um, well, a Spring Cloud Gateway works like a charm, so maybe in this case is not like a very, or a giant problem about uh, performance. So I think we can rise a bit the complexity. And I'm going to give you another example. Uh, imagine that I have an upstream service that returns this, this JSON, OK? And I want to, to modify some fields of this JSON, OK? Uh, I have a filter that is rewriting JSON responses, OK? And I want to, like I said, I want to, to change a couple of attributes. Like in this example, author, um, some title inside some property of the JSON. So this seems a bit problematic because I'm going to process a JSON twice. It's uh, first on the first filter and then into another. So thinking about performance, it worries me. So how we can solve this? with a custom configuration that I think is a very powerful tool uh, that we can use in any of our filters. So for example, I will solve it with something like this. Just one call for, to my filter, but I can, uh, I don't know, think about uh, my own way of configuring it, and I'm also splitting by commas, but I'm doing like a key value uh, pair thing to to configure this and just perform one call to our filter. So I'm going to perform only, uh, I'm going to process only one time my JSON, okay? So how we can do that? 
with custom converters. Uh, this is a, a spring uh, utility, so we are not inventing anything new. It's available from, from the spring family. And as you can see, it's quite simple. We just need to implement an, a converter in this case, and um, uh, it, it receives an input and an output. The input is the string that we just saw with my configuration. And I have created a key value, okay, a key value pair with the uh, attribute name of the JSON and the value that I want to, to put in there. So, well, in this converter, uh, it's, it's uh, forcing me to, to implement this method where I can parse this string as I want. I mean, this is uh, just an example, but think uh, of any of your features and how you can uh, process uh, the configuration. You are free to, to go with anything you want. Let's see in actual code, because that was a resume. But like I said, I have my, my custom converter that is receiving that, that string with all the, all the chunk that I want to configure. And I have created a key value, okay, that has the key of the, of the attribute of the engine and a value. And well, in fact, uh, this will be something like a record, right? I don't need to, to, <laughs> to do the full explanation. And then uh, I have a configuration that is using that key value. It's like, you know, a list or in this case, an array, okay? So I'm gonna use this in my filter. So now another interesting topic that we get a lot of uh, questions about that is modifying the body response. Uh, this can be dangerous, but it's also very powerful and interesting. In fact, this is a real example from, from a client that um, he, he, they cannot change the upstream service for reasons, <laughs> and they need to, to modify some, some JSON content. So God, get the gateway can help you with that. I mean, we are avoiding cost of changing an old API or a super complicated uh, API that nobody is understanding in the company. So they put the gateway and they develop a filter like this one. Like you can see, I'm using my new configuration. And I'm using another Spring Cloud gateway hook here that is this modified response body filter. Um, that it simply allows me to create a function to rewrite the, the body content, okay? So I'm, I'm declaring a rewrite function, and I'm doing inside whatever I want. In this case, uh, we want to change the body, so I'm receiving the, the body here from the response from upstream, uh, well, well, I'm taking that initiation, you know, <laughs> just in case. And I'm uh, using that custom configuration where I already, Spring has processed, the converter has processed for me uh, that, uh, that chunk with, the, with my configuration into a real object that I can iterate. Uh, well, I'm trying to find the, the attributes that uh, I have configured and change its value. And then I just say and add to the chain this, this filter, okay? So uh, you can do whatever you want inside. Let's see it in a demo. Well, like I said, I have the exactly same fi filter here, okay, as you can see. And in the application YAML, I'm just adding uh, the changes that I want to apply. So, well, I'm gonna show you like the real uh, service because you, you might not trust me. This is the, the service, okay, the upstream service that is returning this JSON that we, we just saw in the example. So I'm gonna change the author, um, some title, I don't remember which one, I think it's this one, hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm interacting and, and I want to change this one. So like, like I said, uh, we have uh, our gateway in the middle and it's just going to change it for us, okay? So now I'm on the author, and we have changed the, the title. So it's quite interesting and easy, as you can see, with, after you understand, or you have cleared, because this is tricky, you have to think about the, the, the configuration, 
uh, and how you want to process that and how it can evolve, okay? Because, well, this is like a simple example, but uh, if you are going to process huge, uh, uh, I don't know, a huge JSON and everything, you might want to iterate how to configure this. And that's why uh, I have to do a warning about this because uh, it can be very dangerous uh, changing the response. We have the tools to do it, but take into account that uh, in terms of performance, uh, we need to pay attention when we are doing uh, this because the, this modify uh, response body filter is very cool, but it's very dangerous. So take into account that uh, how you are coding the, the, um, the information or how you are modifying the actual body, it can uh, affect your performance, okay? And well, besides uh, the performance and knowing how, how to, to manage difficult cases, I think one of the keys about uh, Spring Cloud Gateway is uh, really find and really know which are the difference between the request and the response. You might not uh, need to change in every filter the request or in every filter the, the response. Or, mm, well, you, you also have other options. Maybe you always need to change the request in each request that you perform. For that, you have global filters. Um, you have a lot of tools. So I recommend to, to read about, uh, about this and to, to take a look to the documentation because it has really cool examples. And like I said in the previous slides, uh, the, in the chain, the order is important also. So keeping it into mind when you are going to, to develop something. Yeah. The other important topics to remember is do not reinvent the wheel. Um, and I know this is like common sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> but especially with the JOT of, of, of with any authorization process, we have seen ab ab absolutely monsters of people re-implementing or like in the case of JOT, reading the keys by hand which means they are then copying the keys to unsecure repositories and they have like 300 lines of code and then we tell them like, hey, you can do this. Uh, and they are like, oh, thank you, uh, we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been nice before spending two weeks. Um, and that also applies to other things. We saw Spring Security because it's something that we bring uh, in our job almost weekly. But you can also integrate any other Spring library. Always keep in mind to use the reactive versions of the libraries. Otherwise, you will find blocking issues, and then that's when the performance will tank. But you can integrate, for instance, the Spring Data. If you want to store any session information into a remote repository, the same way you would do in a normal Spring Security application, a Spring Session application. The other important point is that the gateway abstraction helps with feature encapsulation, and that's kind of hard because it's not something that comes to mind easily unless you have familiarized a lot and you really, um, they say this is, Sorry for the reference, if someone don't understand it, is thinking portals. Well, you have to think in filters. <laughs> um, that's a half uh, portal game, video game reference. And once you get the grasp of it, you start having this instinct of, oh, OK, so I could just, I, I really did, I'm doing three things. So maybe I could just split this on one filter and then this in another, and then I can compose and I can do things differently instead of having to have these massi massive filters. We haven't gone into how to test filters because that's another process uh, that we wanted to introduce, but it was just too much. And finally, the whole code is in this repo. Uh, there is an issue that it's, it's one of my favorites is fixed test. So just in case uh, you see it, <laughs> sorry. You we, can contribute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have last minute changes uh, and the test broke. Um, and that's it. Oops. Oh, finally. Sorry. We're doing... Okay, one of the two. <laughs> uh, yes, remember all these reactive conversations? Maybe <laughs> someone saw this post in the last uh, 10th of May. This is a Spencer Gift, the project lead of a Spring Cloud Gateway, uh, an amazing person inside and outside of an IDE, really. And he just said, hey, we are starting to work on MVC support, so maybe you can just do filters normally. Uh, with any other uh, blocking APIs and even extend to more and more Spring uh, libraries. But this is a work in progress, but just keep that in mind.
Because we found it funny to mention. Thank you very much. And <laughs> is there any question? Okay. Firstly, that was a really interesting yeah. talk. Thank you. Um, the part where you showed about the rewriting the responses, <laughs> I found this really useful when you've got a uh, a third party application and you need to test really hard to produce error responses from it that you can an easy way that you can produce from a Spring Cloud gateway. But I do have the question which is where you showed us the JOT token for the claims in a header, mm -hmm. you're using Spring Security. Yes. Is there a way to give a granted authority at that point? Add in a yes. A pass through granted authority. You can do it. I can show you later because I don't remember exactly lines of code. But yeah, we do it in FAR for yeah. some some other we projects. We have some fields that are doing it, so we can show. In you. fact, if you remember the the if that I had here, um, uh, it was yes. Um, no, it's in the other one. I think. It is. No, it's just exact claim. Ah, okay. If. Okay, this is my, my life now, looking for an if. <laughs> um, there is this authentication, basically because you seem familiar. We okay, I'm messing a lot. Uh, authentication in, has multiple implementations, and in fact, even when you're talking with JOT tokens, there are different types of implementation, depending on how the token was processed and who is providing it. And usually what we have in real project is these ifs extends to multiple cases and depending on the case we do different things. And depending on the thing, you can access one of others and you can just add it a granted authority if you need to. Okay. Any other question? Yeah. Um, yeah you mentioned uh, uh, in the example you gave, um, you're subtracting the authentication actually and then forwarding it to another one yes but we have numerous of services which are legacy supported for which you would really need username and password credentials like an ltpa2 token or uh, is are there any patterns over there possible to you mean, for instance, like, um, let's say the gateway does some validation and that crea creates different credentials for their service? Well, OAuth is now our standard, so we want to introduce OAuth oh, on so the yes. gateway. But then on the later part, uh, if you don't want to make changes on, the, on all the other applications, um, you do need to send valid credentials. Today we use a service user, like, but then it's very hard because you still need to make changes because not every person can change every yeah. car uh, coming from a previous session. Is there any patterns over there? Or but I mean, at the end of the day, you are going to modify your upstream service. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so just modify. I mean, at some point <laughs> I was wondering, maybe I'm not understanding the question, but uh, no. But in this case, if you're wondering why in the HTTP call because this is the request with the actual token. Understand now why I was scripting saving the token in a file. Uh, and here we don't have the token because I explicitly remove it in the code. This is something that I added this morning. Um, here we are just removing the authorization because I wanted to make it really emphasize that, okay, the upstream service doesn't know anything about OAuth. So, but by default, you would be just sending everything. But in that case, you just would need to modify. Um, Yes. Yeah, if you want to process it, you will need to <laughs> modify the upstream service. But the thing is that you can modify a lot and integrating all, or you can trust in the gateway and just process some, you know, small things like a header or like some property. Yeah. So it helps you with that. But we are not still on the point of doing magic <laughs> and <laughs> modify your upstream service. We'll get together. Yeah, I, I was gonna just joking that. If you can always add another gateway, <laughs> 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 but at the end, it's what said, and I seriously about the level of trust. At some point, someone has to give in. Um, if you are applying a gateway pattern, so there is some point that we they will they will not apply the same security. Yeah. 